Welcome to the CMS training for running on a Windows computer. Um, you can get pretty much anything you need done um, on a Windows computer just using your native programs. Uh, but when we're working in uh, climate and weather science where we're connecting to a supercomputer and then running things over there, it's quite nice to have a common interface so we're able to run the same programs on our local machine as what we're able to run uh, remotely on the supercomputer that lets us do things like develop um, analysis scripts on our own machine on a small amount of data and then take those and run them directly on the uh, supercomputer so I'm going to be talking about a few ways that we can work from a, from a Windows desktop uh, remotely. We're going to be talking about running Jupyter Notebooks and, script and Python scripts, uh, connecting remotely to the supercomputer using SSH in just a terminal and setting up a development environment, so Visual Studio Code that's able to connect to the file system at Guardi uh, from our desktop. Probably the simplest way to set up your computer to be able to work at NCI is to use their virtual desktop system. So this system lets us basically get a Linux uh, computer in a window, so it's running it on a virtual machine up at NCI in, in their cloud infrastructure and that lets us access the GData file system, um, lets us run Python, MATLAB and, and to develop things there. The first step in getting set up with VDI is to take a look at NCI's documentation site. Um, so if you just follow through their website and the documentation pages uh, you'll be led to uh, the VDI documentation. Um, so there's a couple programs you need to install for this. Um, there's Strudel, uh, which is like the, the connection program. Um, and there's VNC. So VNC is the technology that basically lets you see a remote computer's desktop on your own computer. So it's like a, a desktop remote camera, I guess you could call it. Um, follow the NCI documentation for how to install these. Um, that's going to be where the most up-to-date information is going to be. Uh, links to the documentation will be on the uh, wiki page just below the video. Once you have Strudel and VNC installed, um, you can start up Strudel and you'll be greeted with a panel like this. You'll have to add uh, VDI to its list of sites manually. So you go into the file menu and then add to the um, sites list the VDI connection details, um, which you'll get from the documentation. Once you've done that, add your own username. Um, if you like, you can set the resolution for the remote screen. Um, if you're using uh, multiple monitors, that can be helpful to do. Um, it'll show some information. Uh, enter in your NCI password. There is an option to um, save your NCI password in an SSH key. So Strudel can set, up, set that up for you, which you can do if you like. Um, if you're using a machine, a public machine, then it's going to be better to uh, not save your credentials.
Um, you can see the list of applications in the applications menu at the top. It's got things like MATLAB. Um, you've also got your Linux terminal, so you can start up that up um, at, on VDI without having to install anything further yourself. And the terminal here works just like um, on uh, Guardi, um, or just like on any other Linux machine. Uh, you can access the G data storage at NCI directly. So if you're storing stuff in GData, then you can um, access it and analyze it directly from the VDI service. Uh, your home directory, however, isn't shared. So you've got a different home directory to what you do on uh, Guardi. If we start up another terminal, we can also start up a Jupyter Notebook by loading the Condor environments and it'll boot up Firefox for you and show you the notebook. Um, you can start up MATLAB. If you're wanting to use MATLAB, then you will need a to supply your own license. So you talk to your local IT about how to do that. Um, NCI can also help with this as well. Uh, but NCI don't supply MATLAB uh, licenses. So the benefits of using VDI are that it's pretty easy to set up and use. Um, you've just got to install those two programs and then you can get started running things. Um, if you've got a slow connection, it's the best way to get uh, Windows. So if you're wanting to um, do an NC view and see the contents of a NetCDF file or make a plot or something, um, then that's going to be usually much faster than using SSH and an X11 uh, server. Um, the disadvantage is that it is entirely remote, so you will need a network access to be able to run anything at all. Um, so it can be helpful to uh, do some setup to make it possible to run things locally without any type of uh, network connection. Another thing we can do if we don't, if we want to install minimal amounts of programs, um, is we can use Windows has its own terminal. Um, it works a bit differently to uh, the Bash terminal in Linux. Um, so commands and stuff will have different options, may be named differently. Um, but it does have SSH, so we can, from a Windows PowerShell terminal, um, SSH to Guardi, um, just with your SSH username at guardi.nci.org.au, and then that will get you connected to Guardi, and that will be um, Guardi's bash terminal there. So without installing anything at all, um, this is just a, a default thing in Windows called PowerShell. The disadvantage is that it doesn't support window, remote windows. So if we try and start up an NC view session here, we'll get this error saying we can't open a display. Um, I think they are working on fixing this. So in the future, this might work. Um, but even if we install a separate X11 program um, for the moment, we're not able to get remote windows like NC view and stuff like that working from PowerShell. So that's a big drawback. Um, but if you like working in the terminal, just like with Emacs and Vim, um, stuff like that, you can totally get things done um, just with the native PowerShell terminal. So now let's take 
a look at a different way to run things locally using a technology called Windows Subsystem for Linux. What this is, is basically installing a Linux operating system. So like Ubuntu or CentOS, stuff like that as a program on our Windows computer. And then we're able to run things from there. So this is different to installing multiple operating systems, uh, which you can do on the one computer. You have to turn off the computer and turn it back on again to switch between uh, the two operating systems. What this is, is um, basically you have you have a, a Linux process running on your Windows computer. Uh, so it can be quite neat. This is what I personally use for my work uh, when I'm wanting to run Linux programs on my Windows machine. Um, just like before, um, I won't go into the installation details, follow the most up-to-date information on Microsoft's website. So this is, this is a technology that Microsoft developed. Um, so it's sort of super supported for Windows. Um, I think you do need a recent build of Windows 10. And once you've got it set up, you can go to the Windows Store and just search for Linux and there'll be a bunch of different types of Linuxes that are available. Um, Probably a good default choice here would be Ubuntu. Um, it's sort of widely used, so you find a lot of help about it on the internet. Um, though if you like, feel free to install whichever one. Another nice thing to install is Windows Terminal. So there's instructions for that. Um, alongside the Windows subsystem for Linux installation instructions. Uh, Windows Terminal is a bit nicer than the default um, PowerShell Terminal. It lets you have tabs, supports nicer colors and theming. Um, so if you like, give that a go as well. Again, follow the installation instructions um, on the WSL uh, website. Um, but we can see here, this is just a Linux terminal. It's showing my username on my machine. We can start up new tabs. Uh, we can actually choose which type of shell we want to start. So we can choose a PowerShell shell or even a basic Windows batch terminal. Uh, if you're wanting to go old school. And from here we can Guardi and do stuff like that. Uh, we can also set up the configuration. There's a few different options for stuff like what colors you want to use, uh, what you want your default terminal to be. So whether you want a default Linux or a default Windows um, tab. So if we connect to Guardi just with SSH now, um, and try to start up a um, a display just like we did with PowerShell previously. We find that we get an error that it can't open a display. Um, so what we have to do is install a X server program. Um, so I'm using a VCXSRV, which rolls off the tongue pretty well. Um, so you download this program and install it and that lets you use remote uh, windows. Again, this doesn't work um, as is with PowerShell. You have to use um, either Windows Subsystem for Linux or something like Put Putty or um, X11. And then it will say, hey, I'm done. And then that will be running and we can log back out and back in again and start up a display. So we've got our X clock, which is just a clock in a window. That's helpful for testing. 
because you don't have to load any modules or anything. Um, since WSL is just a Linux terminal, you can install things yourself, just like you would on a Linux machine. Um, check your specific Linux variants documentation um, for how to do this on uh, Ubuntu or Debian. You'd run uh, sudo apt install. So here we can install gfortran to be able to compile a Fortran model. That will run through and then install fit, install gfortran for us. Um, same thing for any other Linux program that you, that you might need. So that's been an overview of a few different methods you can use to connect from a Windows machine to the NCR computers, as well as um, do climate and weather research work um, on a Windows machine uh, using a, a Linux terminal. Um, there's a couple alternatives that I've not mentioned. So one is PuTTY. Um, another is Sigwin. Both of those are third-party programs to uh, set up a Linux terminal and um, connect to remote machines. Um, some people might use these. Um, Windows subsystems a bit newer and it's um, supported by Microsoft, which is nice, but um, there's nothing wrong with using those other programs. Um, from here, you can do things like setting up Visual Studio Code, which is a IDE code editor, which you can run on a Windows machine, and then that can use either WSL or it can connect via SSH to a Linux machine. So you can run VS Code on your own computer and then um, connect to Guardi from that. Um, we've also got some scripts for setting up a Jupyter Notebook uh, that will run on um, Guardi or uh, the VDI servers, so on NCI systems, but it'll show up the, um, the Jupyter Notebook interface uh, on your local web browser, which can be quite nice. Um, so those will be covered in other training sessions. Um, but for now, thanks for watching.